Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. So if you want to feel great, like just life is, is, is working for you, you have to harness the power of the Trinity. What is that? Essentially, it's mind, body, and spirit. And I really believe those three words are just kind of thrown away because they're used in advertising campaigns and all of that. And it's just like, ah, yeah, whatever, spirit, the body, the mind. No. They all have to be in sync and balanced for you to feel like you're in sync and balanced. How do you do that? We're going to talk to somebody who's going to give us insight on that today. She's the owner of Advanced Life Coaching. She's an amazing life coach certified hypnotherapist, and so much more. Dawn Torkelson is back with us. Hey, Dawn, how you doing? Hi, I'm great. Thank you. How yeah, are you? I'm good. I'm good. And I'm, I'm, I'm always working on these three things, you know, between the mind, the body, and the spirit. And I'll even start by saying I've been working on the mind thing, trying to get that in, in shape in terms of, you know, healing from stuff and, and having the right mindset and, and, and all of that. The body thing, I ignored it. So I went for lab results, and they're like, yeah, you know what? Your vitamin D is non-existent, like like <laughs> almost off, like doesn't even register. I'm like, really? And they say, are you been feeling like kind of foggy and just kind of like, you know, like moody and fatigued? I'm like, yeah, I guess so. And then I'm, I ignored that because I'm focusing on this other thing over here. But you got to, and it's all of it all comes into play. They're all together. Um, did you have that realization at one point? Yeah, I I have. Um, I actually just came back from a conference too, which which helped me kind of remember, you know, all of it. But yeah, I feel like that's kind of when when you become out of balance and any of of the Trinity, like you said, the mind, body, spirit. If it's out of balance, that's when that's when mental I've. I think that's like when disease is created, mental illness is created. That's when your quality of life kind of goes downhill mm -hmm. because, you know, you quality of life to me is, is being happy, you know, appreciating what you have, you know, um, really being able to, to write out a gratitude list and, and just be grateful for all that you have and for you to have more, you have to appreciate what you, how far you've already come. You know, people always want to think forward and think, well, am I good enough for this? You know, I don't have this yet. I don't have that. And, and the truth is you had nothing when you were born, mm -hmm. you know? So it's, it's like, when you think about it, look how far you've come. If you can stand up and walk, that's huge because you couldn't do that as an infant. You know, even something as simple as, as that is something that you should really appreciate because it just, it's, it's just one of those things where, um, where you can feel good about your accomplishments and it doesn't have to be the biggest house on the block like that, that that's nice. But I don't really think that's an accomplishment. Buying any house is an accomplishment. Having your own place is an, ac an accomplishment. So I kind of feel like, like that's, you need that for kind of that appreciation of yourself. And when you have that appreciation, that connects to like your spirit side. You know, you're loving, you're, you're appreciating all the gifts out there. And, and then you have like the mental side, because if you're appreciating what you have, instead of hating yourself for what you don't have, that helps balance the mental side, because instead of being depressed, you're, you're focused on being happy. And then the cells in your body, they react to every thought and emotion you have. So if you're having negative thoughts and emotions, now you're setting up your body to create some kind of disease, whether it's like you said, being lethargic and tired, not wanting to do simple things like take a walk, you know, taking a walk outside would really help that vitamin D, you know, come down here to Las Vegas. We have lots of sun, <laughs> you and know, that's what you don't do. You're right. And that's yeah. 
it's that's part of self care. Even taking a walk is self care. Yeah, I rarely exactly. do it because I'm always moving, doing stuff, working. But you know, the I dealt with a lot of stress uh, over the past bunch of months, just different situations going on, um, and that depleted it. And it's you know you don't know it until you know it. And I want to go back to what you said before about the big house on the block. It means nothing mm-hmm. unless you're happy. Yes. It means nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I I know somebody personally who has the biggest house on the block, and he's he's always stressed out. You know his his bills. You know, like ten grand a month, and I'm like, dude, you know, and and he's and he's like, well, well, it's okay. You know, I'm making it. I'm like, but you're not happy. You know, you're complaining about how much work you have to do, what you have to do. You're constantly on the go. You know, when when do you get time to, like, appreciate it? And he does take a lot of trips. But then he stresses out about them, you know, because he's taking these trips. And and when he gets back, he's got all this work to catch up on, you know. Why are you talking about me? I'm, I'm totally serious. It, you, know, you know, but I'm talking, you know, I think there's so many people who could say that they're like, oh my God, that's me. You know, hundred percent. Yeah. And, and by the way, that is me because I <laughs> had a similar house um, and worked, not that the, the bills were crazy. It was, it was managed manageable. Um, but I did a lot of work on the house, renovated the entire backyard. I mean, from just, you know, trees and just, you know, all change it up to like a tropical paradise because that's that's my passion. And then one day I just looked and I'm like, okay, you did it, dude. Great. Came, I conquered. Now what? It it was, you know, I don't want to say it was empty because there was a lot of fun there, but I had a pool in the backyard. Um, Maybe twice, twice a year I swam in it. Maybe, maybe. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, because I was either busy, tired from working and all of that sold the house, uh, moved on. And uh, yeah, so to your point, all of that means nothing. Get rid of that, people. Even look at all the people that win millions of dollars in the lottery. Where are they now today? Miserable. The majority of them are miserable. It changed their life for the worse. And you say, well, I you know, wish I could win the lottery. We all do. But do you need to? Ask yourself, do you need to? Do you have what you need right now overall? For the most part. Right. And I I think I think a lot of like your your um your analogy for the lottery is what is your relationship with money? True. And I think that is more important than than the other stuff because if you have a negative mindset when it comes to money, if you grew up thinking the money is root of all evil, then you're not going to to appreciate money. Like um I saw this comedian do this and, and, um, or was it, I don't know. It was someone who did it, but, um, they, they came out with like a few hundred dollars. They, you know, they fanned it out and they're like, I love money. And some people, you know, then, then he asked, or I guess it wasn't comedian. It was like a speaker. Mm -hmm. And then they asked, you know, how other people felt about that. And some people felt really uncomfortable. Like they thought, well, that was rude of him to do, you know, like that's greedy or whatever. And that just, that tells you what their relationship with money is because me, I would be like, yes, I love money too. And it's not a great thing. It's, it's anything that you're rejecting is, is, is going to reject you. And, and that's something that I go over in coaching and, and having the right mindset for money is really important because if you, you know, like, like our, like you were saying, a lot of people relate to having the big house, but they're not really happy. Well, what's your relationship with money is your relationship. I have to make a lot of money so I can keep all this stuff. Or is your relationship. I love money because it is allowing me to Mm -hmm. enjoy all this stuff. Sure. Those are two different mindsets. One, you're working with appreciation. The other one, you're working in suffering. 100%. Somebody told me this too, that you should even, with your point of the relationship to money, set a place setting, invite money over for dinner, have a conversation. (laughs) Like like it's it's a person, 
and and see what your relationship is with it. But yeah, and I I have some friends that always walk around struggling, like I'll never make enough. I I I I, I need to get a car. I'm not, how am I going to afford the car? You're setting yourself up for the failure right there. And I, you know from hypnotherapy probably comes from someplace else, like your parents or their mindset about it. Uh, oh, you, yeah. you could have been a kid. You could have been a kid. And uh, your parent, how many parents have said this? What are you doing? Don't waste money. That doesn't grow on trees. What? Hey, whoa, hold yeah. on there. And that got planted. And then you think that you're not worthy of abundance or you, you just, you're not doing it right. Um, yeah. yeah, it's, it's powerful. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And, it, and I had to change my, my perspective too. You know, I grew up, you know, where, where my mom raised me and, and, you know, a lot of times I'd find something on sale and I'd be like, Oh mom, can I get these clothes? Can I get this? You know, it's on sale. It's, it's, you know, the summer sale or the back to school sale. And she'd be like, yeah, those are great prices. She, you know, if we, if we could afford it mm -hmm. and, and, you know, so I kind of grew up thinking, oh, okay, you know, we can't afford stuff. And I had to actually change that mindset to, okay, um, I will, you know, I can't afford it. I can afford this, you know, and if not, I will, you, you know, know, I, you know, I had to just kind of will it to me, but going back to the Trinity thing. I, you know, full circle, I really think that that is with your mind, body and spirit, you know, like, can you really afford to be depressed? Is staying in bed all day accomplishing your goals, you know, is sitting around crying about, you know, some broken relationship? Are you allowing it to break you, you know, and, and you really have to decide how happy do I want to be? Because nobody else will give you that happiness. You will give it to yourself. And it doesn't really matter where you start. You can, you can overcome any obstacle. And, and if you've allowed those obstacles to manifest into a health condition, mm. you can overcome that too. And, and I know because I'm in the process of doing that right now. You know, I do my own meditations or my own self hypnosis, and I command and demand and instruct my cells to be a, a wellness making machine. You know, even today, I took my dog to the park and and I let her. I have a lead, so um, I started kind of walking. I noticed she was walking faster, so I kind of started walking faster, and I ran. And I haven't ran in about 10 months since wow. my spinal surgery. And, and I was just, it wasn't like I used to run. It wasn't as fast. And I, but I ran from one patch of grass to the other. And I just celebrated like a little kid. I was like, yes, we did it. Thank you, cells. You were so awesome. You were so strong. And I literally was talking to my body and telling it how fabulous it is because you know, you have trillions of cells and all trillion are like little baby children. They all want love. They all want to know that they're doing a good job. And I neglected them for so long. I didn't, you know, I just thought, oh, you know, I'm lucky. I'm healthy. I'm good. Like you don't really pay attention to what that you have a trillion little cells all working really hard. You know, and if you're working hard, you want someone to appreciate that. And, and I think the, the body is the same. And they're listening. <laughs> oh, yes, they're listening. Definitely I, listening. I totally believe everything you're saying and have, uh, in some regards, experience just what you're saying. Um, yeah, I have uh, dealing with skin cancer for like 25 years. And in the last, I say six months, I've had surgeries. It's It's a reoccurring thing. It's pretty good now, and I think it's because I changed my mindset, um, and I just, you know, I, I kind of talk to them. I talk to myself. You know, you're going to heal. It's going to go away. That, you know, that little thing that just popped up there, you, you're not welcome. You don't need to be there. Um, and I start seeing, like, things look clearer. Uh, coincidence? Somebody wants to feel that way? Okay, you can feel whatever you want, but 
there is a connection. What we're talking about here, the Trinity, the mind is connected to the body. Even they say your stomach has a brain, like a, it's yes. like having a brain and it communicates with the big brain. And they're, they're yeah. you know, it's a transceiver. It's, you know, dual communication going back and forth. Uh, there's more than the average person uh, knows that's going on within our bodies. Oh, yeah, because the your emotions are are communicating with your physical body and and your emotions are also communicating with your spiritual body, because a lot of everything you're thinking is going, you know, they're so entwined and connected. You cannot you cannot get away from either or any of the three. You can't get away from any of them. They are all connected and all listening to each other. So that's why I, today I purposely, you know, was like, yeah, good job, buddy. You know, I was always, I was really happy for my accomplishment because yeah, 10 months ago I had a walker and today I'm walking my dog on a lead and I'm sorry if that's not a miracle. I don't know what, I, I don't know what else is, I got you, you. you know? Yeah. And, and even for you. Um, there's actually, I'm going to give some credit for, to Marissa Peer. She's um, a hypnotherapist and she's actually overcome cancer twice. And she does it with hypno with hypnosis. And I've been listening to one of her. Um, she, she does like this hour interview, but like the last 20 minutes of it is, is, um, is one of her hypnosis that she does, you know, for everyone. And I've been listening to that. And she talks about, you know, how you need to speak to yourselves. And, and so, so in my practice, that's, that's what I, hmm. one thing that I teach people is, is how to do this self hypnosis, how to command yourselves to heal. And, and that's, you don't have to be super sick to be talking to your body and just appreciating it being well and telling and commanding it to stay well, you know, and then appreciating God or whatever your source higher power is to, to help support that. Well, that would be the spirit part. Yeah. And we always, you know, when we say the word spirit, I believe a lot of people maybe put up a block or they're uncomfortable with it because they think it's directly related to religion, but that's not what we're talking about here. No. No, no, I'm talking about the energy field, that energy that makes you feel like smiling and jumping up and down when you're when you're happy about something. You know, I'm I'm talking about changing that energy that that makes you sit there and think, oh, am I worthy to? Yeah, I'm definitely worthy. In fact, I had dinner with a friend last night and she made the comment, you know, if when the time comes, am I really worthy to to sit you know, to go to heaven or, you know, to, to advance. And I looked at her and I said, of course you're worthy. I said, you could not be created to begin with if you were not worthy because we're all a piece of the same source energy. We're all created out of creation. So you can't be created unless you're worthy to begin with. So whatever your purpose is that you come here to do, you're worthy of of everything you have. I mean, you have free will, so you can choose what path you want to take, but you're worthy of it. You're worthy of your dreams, your goals, your path. You're worthy of bad choices. It does not make you a bad person, you know? And that's what I was trying to explain to her. And she was just like, wow, okay. You know, she goes, I never really thought of it like that. And I'm like, well, you wouldn't be here if you weren't worthy. So kick that I'm not worthy out of your mind forever. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it, you know we we all sometimes struggle with things that maybe we've done in the past that that takes our worthiness down a couple of notches. Um, but yeah, it's also learning. That's that's what we're here to do too. I, I believe it more and more uh in my journey. There's a lesson in everything. You gotta see the lesson. Sometimes you might not know the lesson right away. It'll reveal itself. That's another thing. Somebody told me very long ago, everything will be revealed. It wasn't this, this, this was an attorney. <laughs> it, wasn't even, yeah. it wasn't even like somebody intuitive, spiritual or anything like that. But it holds true. Like there, everything will be revealed if you don't have the answer. It comes up, it surfaces, you know, like, you know, like, like the, 
you know, somebody's dad once said, you know, it comes out in the wash. Yeah, you know, you'll learn it. You'll figure it out at some point. The one when when somebody's dealing with the the Trinity, the mind, the body, the spirit, how do they know one is out of sync? Or do you just know? And how do you get them back into sync? Is that where you come into play? Yeah, yes. I would yeah, because I, I can help people learn the tools that they need to get everything back into sync. But how you know is by how you feel. What thoughts are you saying to yourself? You know, are they encouraging you or are they holding you back? And and um, and I think that's the most important part. It's like, how do you feel? What are the words you say to yourself? Because those are the most important words you will ever hear. Mm -hmm. So you have to be really, really aware of what are you saying on a daily basis? What are you saying to other people? You know, are you are you being nasty to other people? Because if you are, then you're just reflecting your feelings outward, you know, so you have, so it's not just so it's all the words that you say, whatever you say is powerful. So pay attention to what you're saying and why. Well, we're supposed to love ourselves. Yes. We need to give ourselves permission to do that. A lot of us feel that, oh, well, you know, that's that, that feels uncomfortable you know like egotistical to love yourself but you need to you need to yes. say you know hey i'm pretty cool yeah you know what there's a lot of good in me but you would never say to somebody who you really love the things that most of us say to ourselves we'd never do it Very true. we'd never do it think of you know like if you have a kid or somebody a loved one would you walk up to them and say look at that thing on your face Oh, I'm disgusted with you. This is the stuff we say to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And, and it's, you know, I'll even ask if I'm working with someone, I'll even ask them to keep a little journal and write down their thoughts and what they say to themselves during the day. Or, you know, if they're at work and they can't do it, at least like in, in a couple hour period, like take this time and write down your thoughts, write down, you know, if you notice that what you say to yourself, jot it down and then look back at it. And the whole goal is, is if you find something negative, reframe it to something positive and make, make um, an effort to say more positive things throughout the day than negative until you get to the point where when you're writing it down, you're only writing positive things down. Did you, I, and I, I don't want to pivot here, but I I'm, I just heard this, and I wonder if you ever heard of it, um, in terms of manifesting and this, you know, positivity, and this is the spirit part, but also the mind part of the mind, body, and spirit, um, the 369 manifestation. I have heard about it, yes. Yeah. And, and there's a book. There's a little paper book, 369, and, and it gives you stuff inside to, like, write down. I just ordered it. I was going to say, I actually <laughs> ordered one for somebody else. I gave it, I gave it to someone I knew. Yeah. There's a few of them out there and there's one that's the most popular and it's nothing, um, you know, amazing. But for those of us who struggle with journaling, it kind of makes it easy where yeah. it's all laid out for you. But the three, six, nine thing is the, uh, apparently, as I understand it, in the morning, you should write those three positive affirmations, whatever they are, or manifestations. Around lunchtime, now it's six. In the evening, now it's nine. Every single day. Continue that. Um, and what I've learned, too, is Tesla, not the car, but the... I was, I was just going to ask if you knew where the 369 came from. And, yeah. And, and here's a guy that harnessed energy... Didn't they, you know, we're talking over 100 years ago. There was no power plants. There was no electric, nothing. And he did that through this 369 principle. Um, and that the principle that he uses, and again, this is just you know personal stuff here. That whole thing just popped up in my life where I was talking to somebody about Tesla and about this person that's conducting similar experiments. And Tesla's uh, compound is about 15 minutes away from my house. Not even. Not even kidding. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. That's really cool. I didn't even know. I just saw the 369 thing, and it said, that seems reasonable to keep you on the track. 
of, of yeah. cause I struggle with journaling. I know it's ridiculous, but I, I, you know, I got to remember to it's, do it. And it's not ridiculous. I, I actually like, I actually like the concept of it. That's like I said, I, I've read the book. I've seen it. I actually ordered it for someone Wow, to help and, them out. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like somebody holds your hand through it, <laughs> you know, and, yeah. uh, and people say they have positive results. Uh, we're out of time. I don't know how that happened. Right. Like, it, <laughs> like it just goes way fast. Um, right? If somebody has some struggles with the Trinity, the yeah. mind, the body, and the spirit, you're there. And I'm here. different modalities to help them realize what's going on help them heal in many different ways. You've done it. They can do it. How do we find you? Um, well, I'm at advancedlifecoaching.org. And you can also send me an email at positivenlp at gmail.com or give me a call, 702-266-1132. And I forgot about the NLP aspect of you. That's a whole other area that uh again it's like it's it's like a doctor you go to a doctor and they say oh yeah i've got this this can help you uh the only difference is this isn't medicine maybe energy medicine uh, yeah. but it's something that uh it gets to the root of the challenge and doesn't mask it like traditional medicine does right well that's the whole point you want to get to the root and root it out like you do with the weed yep absolutely and then you have that beautiful garden yep dawn great talking with you really appreciate it it was good talking to you. You too. We'll be Thank right back. Thank you. Have a great day. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, online radio box, and simple radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.